Repite conmigo. Somos los niños olvidados. No tenemos padre ni madre. Buscamos en la basura nuestro porvenir. Somos los niños olvidados. No tenemos padre ni madre. Buscamos en la basura nuestro porvenir. El futuro ya ha pasado. La basura es el presente. La sangre es nuestra ley. El futuro ya ha pasado. La basura es el presente. La sangre es nuestra ley. Now, if you haven't already watched this film, then do yourself a favor and go check it out, because I will be spoiling everything and anything. If my opinion means anything to you, then I give this movie my full recommendation. This film was written by Alberto Vasquez and Pedro Rivera, and it is based on the short comic written and drawn by Alberto Vasquez himself. I will say now that I haven't read that original comic, so I will be making my interpretation solely on the film as well as the Bird Boy short that was released before the feature film and it serves as a sort of prequel to the events of the movie. Bird Boy takes place in a post-apocalyptic nameless island where a huge explosion ended up killing the majority of its residents, as well as permanently damaging the ecosystem. Trees don't grow and the fish at sea died out. In this island we follow a group of adolescent kids, Dinky, Sandra, and Little Fox, as they try to escape their island and the constant harassment from the people who live there. Also we follow an entity known as Bird Boy as we find out what happened in his past, as well as learning about what he can do for the future of the island. Alberto Vasquez said in an interview that this movie is his understanding and his way of expressing how he feels about the issues of today. And to be fair, pretty much every passion project is essentially a writer or director's way of trying to get across their feelings about the world around them. However, what's important is whether or not they get their message across. And to me, Bird Boy is a beautiful example of the dangers of overbearing parenting, racism, and the danger of disregarding the environment. This animated film takes a chance and explores very mature topics, and that is the key word to describe this movie. Mature. Nothing in this film ever seems gratuitous or excessive, it doesn't ever feel like it's trying to be adult or edgy. It's just mature. Alright, but without further ado, let's just get started. Dinky can be seen as a very simple character. She's a bit brash, she's a bit resentful towards her parents and wants nothing more than to leave her island. Your typical teenage girl who dreams of more, yeah yeah yeah, we've seen it a million times. However, I think there's a lot more nuance to Dinky than what you would expect from a character like this. Dinky lives with her family, a mother, a father, and a supposed brother slash pet named Jonathan. She's a bit aggressive and distant towards her parents. The first thing she does when she wakes up is break her alarm clock. The clock yells out, Implying that this isn't the first time this has happened. Later on in the movie, we see that her father repairs the clock. He's probably the one who has been fixing it this whole time, and he also might be the one who built it in the first place. Just from that, we can tell that Dinky has some sort of aggressive feelings towards her father. In Dinky's room, we see a family portrait. In this photo, we see that the man who is living with her now is not her biological father. And at some point, she was, in fact, very happy. Those days were probably before the explosion, and her father was probably one of the people who died back then. The short film does confirm this to be true, however, the movie does an amazing job of explaining this to you visually. Once we meet her parents, we can see exactly why she has these feelings towards them. Her stepfather scolds her about how she's been acting, as her mother mindlessly agrees with him. We are not directly told what Dinky did to warrant this treatment, but from what her father says, Por favor, Dinky. Nosotros solo queremos ser como todos, una familia normal. It's most likely something that they deemed as not normal. They however do mention Dinky's past drug use. While that is definitely something that a normal parent would be concerned about, they immediately guilt Dinky with religious threats, telling her that drugs are the devil's seeds and that her misbehaving will make Jesus cry. Dinky's mother mentions that she has stopped going to church. Dinky is either downing her faith or has already lost it. When children are being overly pressured by their parents, they often act rebellious with little disregard for their own safety. This often causes them to turn to sex or drugs. Dinky exhibits this type of behavior, she acts violently and sexually as a way to get back at her parents, and as a way to show dominance and control in her life. Personally speaking, growing up in an all-Catholic Hispanic family, being the only secular member of said family can be kind of isolating. Every time I would mess up, I would be told I offended God or God's watching. 
I know religion's a very touchy subject, but I think it's very important in understanding Dinky's character. It's this constant pressure from her family that drives her further away and makes her do the things that she does. However, during this time of isolation, she finds comfort in Bird Boy. She uses Bird Boy to shield herself from the world around her. Bird Boy being, well, an actual bird is really good character design. Birds often represent freedom. The fact that they can fly means that they are not bound by land. They can choose to come and go as they want. Dinky sees that in Bird Boy and wants that choice for herself, which is what drives her to run away. Another aspect of this film is the importance of nature, and that is represented by Bird Boy. Bird Boy is ostracized by the people of the island because of his family's alleged involvement with drugs. Before the explosion, Bird Boy was seen living with his father in the island's lighthouse. Birdman, Bird Boy's father, was in charge of that lighthouse, but after the explosion, the lighthouse stopped working. Birdman saddened by the effects the explosion had on the island's ecosystem, he, with the help of the other birds, attempt to grow back the trees of the island, but was shot and killed by the law enforcement because they thought he was smuggling drugs. After Birdman's death, Bird Boy became a nuisance to the town and is discriminated against by both the residents and the law enforcement. Bird Boy is interesting, but he's not much of a character. He more serves to symbolize nature itself. In fact, I think all the birds in this movie show just how much nature is mistreated. It is pretty easy to see just how this parallels our own world, with disasters like the Fukushima meltdown harming the sea, as well as rising sea levels because of the melting of the polar ice cap that's caused by pollution. We depend on the earth, but often we don't give enough back. Bird Boy throughout the movie is shown trying to control himself by suppressing this monster that lays dormant within him. That monster is feared by the residents of the island, but instead of taking care of it, they put it aside and act like it doesn't exist. Bird Boy is abused and cast aside and abandoned, but when he is pushed too far, he will fight back, and often in very violent ways. After all, nature will always find a way to fight back. Nature isn't the only thing that birds can represent. They are also shown to be targets of profiling, most notably by the law enforcement on the island, and I don't think it's very hard to see just exactly what that could represent. The movie follows two officers as they hunt down for Bird Boy, a young rookie and an adult mentor. The older officer is shown to harbor a very deep-rooted hate towards birds. The rookie, on the other hand, seems to be nothing more than a simple young kid who wants nothing more than to show off and act tough. He shows off his gun to some bullies, and we can see that he gets a sense of superiority from them. This is less from him feeling entitled and more coming from a young boy's ego. You know, young people act this way. It's nothing strange. But he is young and the youth is often molded by the role models around them. It's obvious to see that he is still very unsure of his actions, still questioning the violent act towards the birds, opposed to the mentor who is fully aware of his actions. This wasn't always the case, however. In a flashback, we can see that the same uncertainty the rookie has now, the mentor has felt that way in the past. It's revealed that he is in fact the one who killed Birdman. However, when he did, there is this expression of uncertainty certainty on his face, only for it to be washed away, and the only thing that remains is the cynical viewpoint. That hate is shown to him when he was young. Then it will be passed on to the next generation. Where he was the one who killed Birdman, his trainee is the one who will end up killing Bird Boy, and the cycle continues. This movie does a great job subtly implying racism without beating you over the head, unlike certain other animated films out there. Throughout this whole movie, the only two that ever come across as decent people are Dinky's friends, Little Fox and Sander. While Sander is definitely a little more interesting, Little Fox to me is the more relatable and sympathetic one. They both are trying to leave the island as well, however we are never directly told why they want to leave, but from what we are shown we can make some assumptions. Little Fox's idea of running away is sparked when a friend told him that his relative is living somewhere outside the island, living a very successful and happy life. Little Fox, who was bullied, probably became enamored by the idea of escaping his problems. In my opinion, Little Fox is probably the most likable character in the film, solely because he's not a total asshole to anyone. He's the only character in the movie who shows compassion to others, regardless of his relationship to them. There are multiple times in this movie where he shows signs of empathy for those who are mistreated, sometimes to his detriment, but it's still nice to see that in such a cold world, there's still some 
someone who is willing to help. Sandra, on the other hand, is a little harder to understand, mainly because of how little we know about her, especially compared to Dinky and Little Fox. But from what we are shown, she shows signs of having schizophrenia. Trying to find out exactly what causes this is very hard because there really isn't a clear answer, but it's most likely caused by either genetics or a person's environment. Sandra does show signs of having schizophrenia. She hears voices and hallucinates. The voices in her head constantly provoke her to act violently. Now, parental abuse has not been shown to cause schizophrenia, but it has been shown to cause kids to act violently themselves. One that a lot of people know is the famous child of rage, Beth Thompson who was sexually abused as a child, and then later in life exhibited violent acts on her brother and adoptive parents. Sandra might have been abused and is also mentally ill, so combining the two might cause her to have violent impulses. Again, out of all the characters in the film, Sandra is definitely the hardest to really understand. Okay, so the last character I will mention is Zacarias and his mother. Zacarias is a fisherman who works to save enough money to eventually leave the island himself. Fishing became very hard after the explosion, so Zacarias finds himself becoming a drug dealer to the locals as well as Bird Boy himself. His mother, on the other hand, is unaware of his dream to leave the island and finds any way to keep him down. It is revealed that she is a drug addict herself, and her design is that of a lifeless corpse laying on a bed. In her place, a small spider communicates for her. That spider is small and frail, however when Zacarias injects her with more drugs, the spider gets bigger and more vicious. Almost like she is dependent on it? Kind of like an attic? Uh, you see what they did there? Nah, clever. A anyway, what's really tragic about this story is just how stuck they are in this situation. The mother's addiction causes her to act abusive to her son. Her son, not wanting to hurt his mother, is complacent. Even if he can leave, he doesn't want to feel as though he abandoned his mother. The only thing that keeps him going is his dream of leaving, and even that is taken away from him. Come on, little fox, I said you were the good one. He does end up facing his mother and ending her addiction, but even after that, she still dies. Zacarias is stuck after all. He's a fisherman in a sea where there is no fish. Everything might seem disjointed, but it actually all comes together with what I think the movie's core theme is. In this film, we constantly see just how much a parent's choice can damage their child, influencing them to act violently and commit crimes, or rely on drugs to try to escape the pressure that their parents left them. Sometimes it's not intentional, Sometimes they really are looking for what's best for their child. However, they are also caught up in their own problems, dealing with addiction, trying to keep up appearances, and simply trying to survive. After all, it's a pretty harsh and unforgiving world, where people dream for something better and whose dreams are constantly being crushed when reality sets in, where the best thing you can do is put on a facade of being normal or being better off than others. To lie, not just to others, but also to yourself. After all, if you really are content with yourself, do you really need to take happy pills? From what I've been saying, you might think that this movie is nothing more than an exercise in misery. And to be fair, the first time viewing it, it really made me think the same thing. Even with that, the film's ending leaves you with a sign of optimism. In its finale, the runaway children's plans are ruined, their boat sinks, and they are forced to return back to their homes. And everything might seem like it was for nothing. And to make matters worse, Bird Boy is killed by the rookie cop. At this moment, I thought the movie was about cycles and how things can never change. Bird Boy was killed by the young man who was taught to hate by his mentor, the same way the mentor was taught when he was young. And most likely the way the rookie will eventually teach the one who will come after him. Bird Boy, the symbol of nature, was killed. And it might seem as though the film is just a grim reminder, a cautionary tale, that one day through our ignorance and disregard, we the viewer will kill that very same thing. But that's not where it ends and that is definitely not what the movie wants you to leave with. This movie's story is dark and its themes are very bleak, but its message is that of hope for the future. Bird Boy is killed, but his work to preserve that which has been destroyed lives with those who choose to change their own status quo. Sandra did not give in to her violent impulses, instead choosing not to harm others, then later saves her friend's life. Little Fox shows compassion and empathy for those who were caused harm. He's the one who is willing to help those in need, as he himself suffered from violence. Dinky is led to the bird sanctuary, where she finds the very same acorns that Birdman was trying to plant. In the end, she wasn't able to escape the island, but also, in a way, that is not exactly the worst thing that can happen. Nature is something that is very strong and fierce, but it's also very fragile. However, it's also something that can be preserved and we can save. 
In the short film, we see the factory exploding, and then we see the birds and fish die, and sink to the bottom of the sea. At the end of this film, we see those very same fish come back to life, sprout wings and fly. As it soars, we see the trees that disappear come back to life. It's easy to try to run away, but sometimes there really isn't anywhere we can run towards. After all, this is our home, and instead of abandoning it, we can try to save it one step at a time. Alright, that should do it for me. I really did love this film a lot. Trust me when I say that this film has a lot more to offer than what I just said. I know I'm pretty much spoiled everything, but if you're still curious, please check it out. It's available on Blu-ray, and I'm pretty sure you can like stream it somewhere. And I do encourage you to buy it because this film deserves all the support it can get. I know I've been focusing on, you know, like the story and the themes and characters or whatever, but visually it actually looks amazing, as well as having a really unique soundtrack. And also, I know I've been spelling things out for you, but the movie really does not do that. It does not hold your hand on what it's trying to say. And it's also not preachy about its message, it's really subtle about everything. This, of course, is just my interpretation. If you have seen the movie, then please let me know what you think. What do you think this movie's about? Maybe I'm wrong. Probably. I'm not that smart. Other than that, please like, favorite, subscribe. Also, check out my Let's Play channel where me and my friends do a bunch of funny stuff. As well as our Twitch where we stream sometimes. Follow me on Twitter. Um, all in the description down below if you want to check it out. Other than that, uh, that should do it for me. Thank you for watching. The next video will come out whenever, I don't know. We'll see. And until next time, thank you for watching.